CDL manual section 2.7.1 Space ahead. Safe drivers maintain space around their vehicles for the following reasons except A. In case you must stop suddenly. B. In case there are cars following too closely. C. In case there is an obstacle in the road. D. In case you need to test your brakes. CDL Manual Section 2.7.1 Space Ahead How much space should you maintain in front of you at highway speeds? A. 7 seconds for a 60-foot vehicle. B. 5 seconds for a 60-foot vehicle. C. 10 seconds for a 60-foot vehicle. D. 3 seconds for a 60-foot vehicle. CDL Manual Section 2.7.1 Space Ahead you are driving a 40-foot vehicle at 45 miles per hour. Driving conditions are ideal. Dry pavement, good visibility. What is the least amount of space that you should keep in front of your vehicle to be safe? A. 2 seconds B. 3 seconds C. 4 seconds D. 5 seconds CDL Manual Section 2.7.1 Space Ahead Which of these statements about managing space is true? A. Smaller vehicles require more space to stop than larger ones. B. When the road is slippery, you should keep much more space in front of your vehicle. C. Many accidents are caused by drivers keeping too much space in front of their vehicles. D. All of the above. CDL Manual Section 2.7.2 Space Behind If you find that you are being tailgated, you should A. Quickly change lanes to avoid an accident. B. Flash your brake lights to warn the tailgater. C. Decrease the distance between you and the tailgater. D. Increase the distance in front of you, if possible. CDL Manual Section 2.7.2 Space Behind If you are being tailgated, you should... A. Signal the tailgater when it is safe to pass. B. Speed up. C. Flash your brake lights. D. Increase the space in front of you. CDL Manual Section 2.7.4 Space Overhead Which of the following statements about overhead space is true? A. The heights posted at bridges are usually accurate. B. The weight of the cargo changes a truck's height. C. Warning lights are always installed on low bridges and overpasses. D. An empty van is lower than a loaded one. CDL Manual Section 2.7.6 Space for Turns When making a left-hand turn, you should always A. Wait until you reach the center of the intersection before you turn. B. Start in the left-hand lane if there are two turning lanes. C. Pull into the intersection in case the light turns before you are through. D. Wait for a small gap in traffic and accelerate. CDL Manual Section 
2.7.6 Space for Turns When making a right-hand turn, you should always A. Steer into the left lane first so you can make the corner. B. Rush through the intersection so you can get out of the way of traffic. C. Back up to make the driver behind you move back. D. Keep the rear of your vehicle close to the curb. CDL Manual Section 2.8 Seeing Hazards The most important reason for being alert to hazards is so A. You will have time to plan your escape if the hazard becomes an emergency. B. Accident reports will be accurate. C. Law enforcement personnel can be called. D. You can help impaired drivers. CDL Manual Section 2.8.2 .2, Hazardous Roads While driving, you see a small, one-foot square, cardboard box ahead in your lane. You should a. Steer around it when it is safe to do so. B. Hit it with your vehicle to knock it off the road. C. Brake hard to avoid hitting it. D. Stop and direct traffic around it. CDL Manual Section 2.8.3 Drivers Who Are Hazards A vehicle marked at the rear with a red triangle having an orange center A. Is hauling hazardous materials B. Is moving slowly C. Is a farm vehicle D. May stop at any time. CDL Manual Section 2.11 Driving at Night By law, you must have your vehicle's lights on A. One half hour after sunset until one half hour before sunrise. B. Unless street lights are lit. C. Only when there's not enough natural light to see clearly. D. None of the above. CDL Manual Section 2.11 Driving at Night Driving at night is more dangerous because of the following, except A. Most people are less alert at night due to fatigue. B. Headlights often cause glare, which can blind drivers. C. Traffic lights are less visible than in the day. D. There are more drunk drivers at night. CDL Manual Section 2.11.2 Driver Factors What is the best thing to do if you are tired? A. Drink plenty of coffee to stay awake. B. Take pills to keep you alert. C. Plan your trips for the middle of the night to avoid traffic. D. Get enough sleep. CDL Manual Section 2.11.4 Vehicle Factors Which of these is a good rule to follow when driving at night? A. Keep your instrument lights bright. B. Look directly at oncoming headlights only briefly. C. Keep your speed slow enough that you can stop within the range of your headlights. D. Wear sunglasses. 
CDL Manual Section 2.11.5 Night Driving Procedures High beams should be A. Dimmed when you are within 100 feet of another vehicle. B. Use whenever it is safe and legal to do so. C. Turn on when an oncoming driver does not dim his or her lights. D. All of the above. CDL Manual Section 2.13.1 Vehicle Checks Which of these statements about cold weather driving is true? A. In snowstorms, wiper blades should be adjusted so that they do not make direct contact with the windshield. B. Exhaust system leaks are less dangerous in cold weather. C. There is no need to worry about engine overheating when the weather is very cold. D. Windshield washer antifreeze should be added to the washer reservoir. CDL Manual Section 2.13.1 Vehicle Checks While driving, ice builds up on your wipers and they no longer clean the windshield. You should A. Keep driving and spray the windshield with washer fluid. B. Keep driving and reach out the window and knock the ice off. C. Pull over in a safe place and remove the ice. D. Keep driving and turn your defroster on. CDL Manual Section 2.13.2 Driving Retarders A. Allow you to disconnect the steering axle brakes. B. Cannot be used on interstate highways. C. Work better at very low RPMs. D. Can cause the vehicle to skid when the road is slippery. CDL Manual Section 2.13.2 Driving You should avoid driving through deep puddles or flowing water. But if you must, which of these steps can help keep your brakes working? A. Applying hard pressure on both the brake pedal and accelerator after coming out of the water. B. Gently pressing the brake pedal while driving through the water. C. Turning on your brake heaters. D. Driving through quickly. CDL Manual Section 2.13.2 Driving. When roads are slippery, you should A. Stop and test the traction while going up hills. B. Drive alongside other drivers. C. Decrease the distance that you look ahead of your vehicle. D. Make turns as gently as possible. CDL Manual Section 2.13.2 Driving Your brakes can get wet when you drive through a heavy rain. What can this cause when the brakes are applied? A. Lack of braking power B. Trailer jackknife C. Wheel lockup D. All of the above CDL Manual Section 2.13.2 Driving CDL Manual Section 3.2.4 Balance the Weight Which of these can cause the vehicle to skid? A. Not enough weight on the drive axles B. Over acceleration C. Turning too sharply D. All of the above. CDL Manual Section 2.14.1 Driving in Very Hot Weather 
The following statements about an engine overheating are true except A. Antifreeze is only used in colder temperatures. B. If you can touch the radiator cap with your bare hand, it is probably cool enough to open. C. It is not possible to safely drive without radiator fluid. D. Never leave the engine running if it is overheating. CDL Manual Section 2.16.2 Select the right gear. If you try to downshift while coming down a mountain, you might A. Damage the engine B. Wear out the clutch C. Get stuck in neutral D. Lose traction CDL Manual Section 2.16.2 Select the right gear before starting down the grade. You are driving a new truck with a manual transmission. What gear will you probably have to use to take a long downhill grade? A. A lower gear that we, you would use to climb the hill. B. The same gear you would use to climb the hill. C. A higher gear that you would use to climb the hill. D. None. Newer tricks can coast down hills. CDL Manual Section 2.16.3 Brake Fading or Failure You are traveling down a long, steep hill. Your brakes get so hot that they fail. What should you do? A. Pump the brake pedal. B. Downshift. C. Look for an escape ramp or escape route. D. All of the above, simultaneously if possible. CDL Manual Section 2.16.4 Proper Braking Technique Truck Escape Ramps A. Cannot be used by certain types of heavy vehicles. B. Are designed to protect vehicles from damage. C. Should not be used unless you have first tried all other ways to save your vehicle after brake failure. D. All of the above. CDL Manual Section 2.16.4 Proper Braking Technique Which of these describes how you should use the brake pedal on a steep downhill grade? A. Release the brake when you are 5 miles per hour below your safe speed. Then, let your speed come back up to your safe speed and repeat braking again. Bring your speed down 5 miles per hour below your safe speed. B. With stronger pressure as the vehicle goes downhill. C. Light, steady pressure all the way down the grade. D. Light pumping action. Gradually increase pressure if speed increases. CDL Manual Section 2.17.1 Steering to avoid a crash. What is counter-steering? A. Using the steering axle brakes to prevent oversteering. B. Steering in the opposite direction from what other drivers expect you to do. C. Turning the wheel in the opposite direction after steering to avoid a traffic emergency. D. Turning the steering wheel counterclockwise. CDL Manual Section 2.17.1 Steering to Avoid a Crash Your vehicle is in a traffic emergency and may collide with another vehicle if you do not take action. 
Which of these is a good rule to remember at such a time? A. Stopping is always the safest action in a traffic emergency. B. Open the door and jump out if you have time. C. Heavy vehicles can almost always turn more quickly than they can stop. D. Leaving the road is always more risky than hitting another vehicle. CDL Manual Section 2.17.1 Steering to Avoid a Crash You are driving on a two-lane road. An oncoming driver drifts into your lane and is headed straight for you. Which of these is generally the best action? A. Steer to the right. B. Steer onto the left shoulder. C. Hard braking. D. Steer into the oncoming lane. CDL Manual Section 2.17.1 Steering to Avoid a Crash You are driving in the right lane of a four-lane, undivided road. You come over a hill and find a car stopped ahead in your lane. You do not have room to stop, and the hill blocks your view to the rear. Which of these is most likely the best action to take? A. Steer to the right. B. Use hard braking and brace for collision. C. Steer into the left lane. D. Steer into the oncoming lanes. CDL Manual Section 2.17.1 Steering to Avoid a Crash To avoid a crash, you had to drive onto the right shoulder. You are now driving at 40 miles per hour on the shoulder. How should you proceed? A. Keep moving at the present speed and steer very gently back onto the pavement. Ste- uh, B. Steer sharply onto the pavement and counter steer when both back wheels of your vehicle are on the road. C. Brake hard to slow the vehicle, then steer sharply onto the road. D. Come to a complete stop, if possible, before continuing back onto the road. CDL Manual Section 2.17.2 How to Stop Quickly and Safely Which of these is the most important thing to remember about emergency braking? A. If the wheels are skidding, you cannot control the vehicle. B. Disconnecting steering axle brakes will help keep your vehicle in a straight line during emergency braking. C. Never do it without downshifting first. D. It wears brake linings. CDL Manual Section 2.17.2 How to Stop Quickly and Safely Stab Braking A. Should never be used. B. Involves locking the wheels. C. Involves steady pressure on the brake pedal. D. Should only be used on slick roads.